Today we're going to be installing a wind restrictor on a Cadillac XLR. I would like to thank Steven over at Wind Restrictor for sponsoring this episode of the Corvette channel. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a wind restrictor installation on my wife's Cadillac XLR. And I uh, just wanted to go over everything with you. Um, as you can see, it's already installed and we're going to go through the install process. But I wanted to let you know that um, the restrictor itself comes with a very detailed instructions. So you may not even need my video, but you'll have it just in case, okay? It also comes with some cleaner that you only want to use this type of cleaner and it's uh, it's called Novus and um, it's Novus Clean and you can pick this up, up at Walmart, AutoZone, anything like that. Um, it's a special cleaner. They actually throw a little, uh, they include a little rag that's made just for uh, wiping the wind restrictor down. You do not want to use Windex. Okay, so some of the things that I just wanted to point out before we get started here. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about wind restrictor. If, if you guys are watching the channel, you guys have seen that I've done a lot of wind restrictors on different cars. Um, mostly, almost all Corvettes. Um, and the reason we're doing it on XLR is because we, this is a Corvette underneath. Um, but they make them for a lot of different cars. They make them for Dodge, Ford, uh, Jeep, you name it. They probably have it. Um, and they, they have a lot, like I said, just a lot of different ones that are available to you. And this one here is pretty much a, a stock one. We actually added the word Corvette channel at the bottom of this one. But this is pretty much a right off the shelf uh, setup that they have here. And you can also customize them. So it's not that much more to customize them to get exactly what you want. Um, this particular one you can see is moving, uh, it's changing, and it's in, kind of in demo mode right now and it has a remote control. Let me show you the remote control right here. Um, you can adjust all of the different settings on it, how fast it blinks or if you want it to be solid. Um, so that's in, that's in the package, that's an upgrade, um, but the standard restrictor comes with just one single light and um, I'm gonna be covering that in the video for both installations, whether you're getting the standard uh, standard single light or getting the multi-light system. So I'll be putting that in the screen here. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll put the, uh, or you can fast forward to either one of your installs so that way you can see how it's hooked up. Um, and so anyway, um, I just want to tell you a little bit about Wind Restrictor. Uh, they are a Dallas-based company. They're here in the United States. Everything they make is all here. It all comes from here. Um, and so um, you not, you just can't beat that, just the fact that it's all made in America. But they also offer a lifetime guarantee on their product. So as long as you don't try to clean that with Windex or something that's abrasive, they're going to cover this for life, okay? So if you have a problem with the electronics, you the lighting, whatever it is, you call their customer support number, and I'll go ahead and I'll put that information on the screen too, but they'll take care of you. I have worked with them now for about three years, and um, I just love them to pieces. And I've been, uh, I've been doing YouTube with them, and they've been sending me stuff to be able to install, and uh, we are now planning on becoming a dealer. I really, really think the world of these guys. Everybody is awesome. They help so much. And it's not just me. It's all the feedback that I get from all of our viewers that have bought because they've seen us do these installs. And they they are also are offering the discounts that, that you guys get as Corvette channel members. Um, and so when you guys go to call in and make this order, when you decide you want to get one, whether it's for the, uh, an XLR that you have or whether it's a Corvette or Camaro or whatever it is, be sure and mention Corvette channel and you're going to get that discount. Okay. So I'll put all that information on the screen too, but, um, guys go ahead and sit back and relax. We're going to go ahead and show you how it's done, how it goes on. 
On this particular car, it is a breeze to install this thing. It really is. Besides having to climb into the trunk to, uh, to get some of the wiring in there, and you're going to see that in the video, um, besides that, it's really not that hard. Okay, so um, I've, I've pulled, uh, I've pulled some, the, the harnesses out so you can see the actual wires. You'll be able to see exactly what we're hooking onto, and um, I think it's going to be very easy for you to, to follow it and install it. The wiring uh, that I'm doing for the multi-light kit that's in this video will apply to all different wind restrictors um, that are probably the last couple of years and newer. So, um, so anyway, this is kind of a multi-use video for you. So if you are just now getting your wind restrictor, um, you'll be able to follow along and hook this up exactly the same way. I'm going to cover in this video how to uh, get yourself set up for a... Um, for the, ex, for the uh, wind restrictor to work while you're parked and not drain off of your car battery like it's doing right now. It's running off of a auxiliary 12 volt battery and we have a quick disconnect that's in the trunk and I'm gonna dis I'll go over that in the video also. So this way you can be at a car show and you can go about 12, 14 hours with this thing running without having any any of your you know your electronics in your car running so you're never going to get stranded that way i've seen that at car shows so many times everyone's got their stuff on all day long and they go to leave at the end of the day and their car won't start so this is the ultimate way to do it what i'm showing you here and uh i think it's just the best way to do it so um again if you guys have any questions um feel free to leave comments below and uh, as you all know anybody that i watch my comments all the time so if you guys have something I pretty much respond very, very quickly. So um, hopefully, it, like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to give me a holler. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and jump into the video now and uh, hopefully you like it. All right, guys, we're in the car now and the first thing we need to do is we need to remove the four screws that are coming from the center console here. So you're just gonna open up the, four, the center console. I've already removed the, the screws, they're torque screws. And they even include uh, the little torque uh, wrench here for you to be able to get them out. So those screws are right here in these corners. And you're just going to pull those out. And then you go ahead and you remove this little guy. And you can just set it off to the side like so. And that's going to open up this area here. Now, um, you can see right here, there's two screws right here. Those are grounding areas also. And so if you are utilizing a wind restrictor that is a single light setup, then when we run our wires down through the roll bar here, you would use this as a, uh, as a point for your negative wire. And the other wire will end up going back to the trunk and we'll cover that later also. All right guys, now that we have our center console out, and we have access to the underneath the deck. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna run our wires here um, through between the deck lid and the roll bar. And so what I'm doing here is I just have a screwdriver, a very thin screwdriver, if my tape will cooperate with me. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna tape these wires right here, like so onto this screwdriver, like that. Okay, now, what I found was that if you go in like right here in this area close to the front, there's a lot of stuff in the way. It's just not going to let you get it down in there and get your hands in there. So I found that if you go back over here, you can get back behind there. Okay, so what you're doing is you're just going to kind of pinch that in there like so. Just like that. Okay, then you can reach your hand up inside here. And you'll feel, be able to feel the screwdriver and the wires, and you can pull this, pull it right back out, like so. But now I can pull the wire down through. And just be careful. Just fish it down. Okay. Like that. Make sure your wires are nice and straight. Okay. All right. So now we're going to leave this loose just a little bit here for a minute while I go ahead and and uh, get this other part prepped. 
So now what you want to do here is the, the next step is that the wind restrictor itself needs to sit on the front side of this. Now guys, this is very important. If you mount it on the back side, right, the, the mechanism of the roof will end up just, you probably hurt the mechanism of the roof, but you're going to destroy the product. So you don't want to do that. So you want to make sure that it's mounted to the front. And this little guy here ends up being here near the front. So you want to leave yourself a little bit of gap with the wire and it's going to end up sitting kind of like this. Okay, so what you want to do now at this point is you want to make sure that your wire is out there like so and that you can test fit this. Right? And, if, and so you can take it like so and you can set this little guy right there in the slot. Then at that point, you can get this lined up where you want it to be. You want it to be centered on both sides. Okay, so you can you can see that. Okay, it's like that. And now you know that that is completely up against the roll bar. You want to make sure it's up against the roll bars because these little brackets right here are going to go, we're going to take these screws out and this is going to actually go underneath here like so. These are going to go through the front side and that's going to lock this in. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we know exactly right now where this is going. Okay, so we're, we're pretty close to what we want to do. So before we try to stick it down, we're going to go ahead and we're going to lift this back up just a little bit. And we're just going to wipe this down. Okay. And we're going to let that dry. And then once we're dried with that, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull the sticky tape that's on the bottom of, of the light rail here. And then I'll just pull it back and I'll set it in place because I've already got it pretty much exactly where I want it. So once this dries, we'll be good. And then we're almost done with the top side. And so there's that. We're going to go ahead and we're going to peel our tape. So now, like I said, we know this is right where we want it. This is going to go right here. We're going to set this right there in place. And we're going to push down. And we're going to hold this for about 45 seconds. All right, guys. So now that we've got this uh, seated here and it's adhered, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use the brackets to attach it onto the roll bar. So I'm going to move the seat forward and get it out of my way so I have a little bit of room to work. Now, with the doors open, the seat's going to stay where it is. These cars have an automatic re uh, uh, readjustment of the seat on exit, so be aware of that if you close the door. Um, or open the door back up, it's going to move on you, so just make sure you've, you're have you aware of that when you're working on it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take these bracket, these screws loose, and I'm going to go ahead and put one of the one of the brackets in. Now let me point something out to you guys, and they talk about this in the instructions. You want to make darn sure, this is an aluminum bracket, so you want to make sure that the screws are perfectly straight. Okay, you want to make sure you do not cross thread these. If they do, you will strip this out and then you're going to be calling customer support for another one of these. So, so um, you just want to make sure that you hand start these and you get it nice and get it started nice and smooth. And, and the reason I say that is because you're going to need to kind of push down just a little bit here to make sure that it will line up because you are pushing against the foam that's in the... Um, in the uh, roll bar, okay? It's not hard, but I want to just point that out to you that um, if you're not careful, you could screw it up, okay? All right, so we're gonna get that one, that one started. Now, like I mentioned before, they also include the Allen wrench, like they included the torque, so you don't even have to have any of the tools. The only thing you've got to supply yourself is the screwdriver, so that's kind of cool. So we're just gonna get these snug so if you're feeling any resistance here when you're tightening these up, you need to stop because you probably don't have threads in there right. Okay, so now I'm just gonna leave it just like that for a second. I'm gonna go to the other side here and get that one started and then I'll come back and I'll do, uh, I'll tighten both of them up. Okay, 
this one's almost done. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tighten up the other side. And that part of the installation is complete. So now what we're going to do, the next step is I'm going to go ahead and clean all this stuff up. We're going to go ahead and put the roof back up. That way we can get these wires um, back into the trunk and we'll, we'll uh, be able to connect everything up in the trunk. All right. All right, guys, we're in the trunk here um, and I just wanted you guys to be able to see how it's wired. Now I'm going to be showing you how if you have a single light system, uh, how it comes through and gets wrapped around and goes to down through the carpet and into the uh, into the uh, computer area and to, so we can connect it up. But we are going to be using a four wire system, so I'm actually not going to have these wires up in the trunk area. But I want to cover this so you know exactly how to do it. So what we're doing here is this has got a little cover here, as you can see, and this just this just lifts up by this little hook, and you can drop this down. Okay, and now you can. This reveals right here where we took everything out, where we wrapped everything down. You remember when we did the uh, with the screwdriver and we ran the wiring down through? That was like right here, and the wire is there, and it's going down this post right here, and it's coming along right down in here like this. And what we want to do is you want to make darn sure that you wire it, strap it, or tape it so it is not touching any of this all of these linkages because this is all how the roof goes up and down so you don't want your wire to get pinched okay so you're going to be able to tuck that down like so and again yours is only going to be a two wire system if you're doing it this way um, or um, or you could actually do and put the module in the back also but it would only be responsive when you have the headlights on or something so uh, I'm going to talk about two different ways of doing this wiring, and this is the, the two-wire version first. So you're just going to be running this all the way down. You're going to take it all the way across, all the way across here on the underneath, and then at that point, you can put this back up because you're done. And then at that point, let's see if I can get out of the way a little bit here. You can see that I've got the wire. I've just gone all the way around here like this, tucked it down, and brought it underneath this carpet here. And I'm taking it and I'm going to move this carpet all the way up like so to get this get this little guy all the way down here like this okay and it's just going to come all the way down and get tucked underneath we're going to bring it to about like so and then we're going to pull this carpet right here back Okay, and that is going to relieve, going to show you that we have, there's this little cover that goes in here just like this. We're going to pull that out. And in the instructions, it talks about you have a lot of different harnesses, and you can see there's a pile of them in here. But what we did, we did find that it is a, it's a, one of the fairly bigger ones. It's actually normally connected right here on the side. It's a little snap piece, so you can just press that out. Get yourself a little screwdriver, and it'll pry right out of there. So you can get to this little clip and that'll just pop out so you can get to it. So what you've got is that when I, you remember I, up in the front when I was showing you those two bolts, um, that's where you would get your ground, okay? And then you're only going to be basically be bringing back one wire um, back to here. And so this is where you get to make your decision on whether you're going to have your restrictor light up when you're, you're running lights or, you know, or well, tail lights or running lights, however you want to call it, where they're on all when your headlights are on. Um, and that would be going to your brown wire that's in this harness right here. Okay. And then if you want your, uh, if you want it to come on as a third brake light, then you'll be tying into the blue wire that's right here. So this is the harness that you want to get to. Okay. And it, the, the kit comes with a little wire tap, so you're just literally just going to tap into one of those two wires, and you're good to go. Okay. If you have done that, then you have already completed the installation. If you, um, if you are going into a, uh, an LED, you know, the multi-light kit where you've got the remote and all that type of stuff, 
then you're, you could do that. You could run the wire back here like this and you could tie into the brown wire that would give you power, you know, constant power that when your taillights are on that you would have power to the controller and then you could just hook these little, these little, uh, the wires up to the controller and you would always have um, your, your system would work when you have your taillights on. Um, I, however, I like to be able to have them on, so when I'm at a car show or I'm sitting still and I want to be able to have my system running all the time, but I don't want my, my lights on in the car, um, I like to be able to have it so it's separate, so it, it will go on and off with the car, okay, with the key of the car. I'm also going to show you how to install a battery, so instead of running off of the car battery, that we're going to be able to install a separate battery and we'll be able to do a quick disconnect on that. Um, the, um, there is enough room to be able to put the uh, battery inside this compartment, but there is another compartment on the other side that is completely not used, and so I'm gonna do it that way. So in order to do that, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put the LED control system back up in the spot up behind the uh, uh, the little glove box that we took out and we're going to run a wire all the way from there because I have a wire that goes up to the fuse box already um, which is underneath the passenger side kick panel and that is a keyed on and off hot and so I'm going to be able to tap into that but I'm also what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a wire that goes all the way back to the trunk which will allow me to either run the power from the battery of the car or from the battery from the portable battery. So, um, like I said, stay tuned and we'll get to that point here in just a minute. I'm going to reset all this so you know exactly how it's done. This video or this part of the video is for those of you that have bought the LED controller that has the multi-light kit for it. And I'm going to show you how it's done in the XLR or where I'm going to place this. This controller is used throughout all of the uh, Winter Stricter brand controllers, so you, me showing you how to do this on this one, you'll be able to do it on all of them. Now, what I did um, on this is that I have tapped into uh, power um, up inside here. I had ran a, a power wire all the way from the fuse uh, down here underneath the passenger kick panel and ran it up into this compartment. And then I utilized one of these bolts right here for the ground. Okay, so what I've got there is that I have one wire here that goes all the way back to a quick disconnect right here like so. Okay, and this has a, a male on it, or excuse me, a female. And we have a male that's going to, it's a double male that goes to this battery. Okay, now what I'm going to do here is that this connector is going to end up being in the trunk. Then we're also going to have another connector that is going to go all the way from this compartment here where I got the power all the way back to to the trunk also. So what I can do then is we will have three connectors here like this. One will be coming from the little portable battery pack, this one will be coming from the car power, and this one will be going to the LED controller. And by doing that, we can just simply select which one we want to get our power from. So if we are wanting to run off of the battery, so we're at a car show and want to make, our, make sure that it lights, it's lighting up, but we don't want to end up stranding ourselves later on um, because the car's been on all day long and we've killed the battery, we literally can switch between, okay? Just like that. So I'm just going to briefly go over this for you and show you how this part is done. We've got this one harness here, right? We're all, it's already, it has a red and a black wire, and we're only, all we're gonna do is we have DC positive, DC negative, so we're gonna go ahead and we're going to just put those into, into those slots, okay? So that's gonna be, that's gonna be the negative wire, black is our negative, okay, just like so. And we're gonna do red over here, I can get it to go in there. There we go. See right there. All right. 
Now, the only other thing that we have to do, and I'm gonna cut these wires to lengths, but I wanted to be able to show you where we don't have all these wires just tucked away. I'm gonna cut these later on and, uh, and shorten them up. But I wanted to make sure that you could see that we have four, four wires here, and you have a blue, green, red, and then you have a black wire, okay? The one that's marked V+, plus, that's gonna be your black wire. Uh, red is R and G is green and blue is the is B. So you're just going to connect those wires up and then at that point we will be good to go. And then, um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hook cut these to, to, uh, to length and I'm going to set these in here and then we'll go ahead and go to the back. We'll wire the wires back to the trunk and put the battery in the compartment so I can show you where that goes. Um, the only other thing that we're going to be able to do is I've mounted two-sided two stick tape. You could use Velcro or two-sided stick tape. And we're literally going to put it right up inside here, up, in the, up and out of the way so this, this little center compartment, when it slides in, it's not going to hit that. It'll be tucked away right there. Okay? So once I get these wires cut to length, we'll move on to the back. All right, guys. What you're looking at, you're looking at, is the back passenger side of the trunk. Um, and what I did was, I did the exact same thing I did on the other side, where I ran the wire up behind here and around this carpet here, and then underneath this carpet all the way up to here. And you can see that the wires are coming out right here. Okay. So what we have now is we've got this wire that's going up to the LED controller that's up in the center console, and then we have one wire here that's coming from this battery pack, and we have one wire here that's coming from the actual car power. So what we're gonna be able to do is that we can literally just switch right here. So that would be the battery or the car, and this would be either the battery or the car switching back and forth. So we can we can just look at this and be able to figure out which one it is, and we can we can either you know tape it or mark it. However, this is the one that's coming from this battery pack like that. So this way you can take this battery, take it in the house, and you can charge it with the charger that's included. Okay, so if we go ahead and we plug that in like so, we plug this one into here, we plug, plug that in like that, and we flip this on, we get our wind restrictor working as you can see. Okay, now if I shut the battery pack off, it doesn't work. Okay, so at that point, if we go back and we disconnect the battery, and we plug it into the car power, which is like that, you can see that the, the unit is not working. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna I go ahead and start the car and you're gonna see that it comes on. And so now we have power coming from the car, which is the way that you normally would run it all the time until you decide you're gonna put it on for display. So that gives you the best of both worlds. So guys, uh, when you guys do this, uh, when you decide you're going to do the battery, you're going to want to make sure that you, when you're ordering it, that you let Wind Restrictor know that you're going to be doing the battery in addition to the car. So you're going to need a battery quick disconnect kit. They have those readily available in stock, so just make sure that you let them know and they'll be able to include that in your package. I'm just going to go over the remote control here with you just real quick. As you can see, you have an off and you have an on. We're going to go ahead and we're going to hit the on button here. And you can see that it's gone into its demo mode. And now you can just go around the ring here and you can hold it and move it around. And you can pick pretty much whatever color you want it to be. And you can leave it right there and it'll just stay static. Then when the power goes off on the car, it will remember this when it comes back on and it'll come back right to this exact same position. Um, there's multiple, the instructions are inside the, uh, the box with the remote. The, this button here is a dimmer, this dims it down, okay, and 